In this example, I will demonstrate how to migrate typical related tables of data in Access up to Office 365 or SharePoint. And from a terminology point of view, I will use the term Office 365 or SharePoint interchangeably. At the end of the day, I'm talking about a system that allows you to move your data up from Access into SharePoint or Office 365. To further reduce confusion here, keep in mind that the new relational database features are part of SharePoint and you do not require or need Access Web Services. This means the technique outlined here allows one to move relational data from typical Access databases up to SharePoint and without the need for Access Web Services. The only requirement here is you are running SharePoint 2010 or 365 which now has support for relational data. You also need Access 2010 or later for this automated upsizing of relational data to SharePoint 2010. In this example, we're going to move up some data from a time and billing application. We have three tables that are related to each other in a typical customer invoicing application. We have our main table of customers. We then have a child table of invoices for each customer. And for each invoice, we have a table that holds lines of detail for the given invoice. While in this demo I use an Access Web Database, the steps outlined here work equally well with that of regular upsizing of regular databases to Office 365 or SharePoint. And I dare say the steps here use a copy of your data, so you're free to mess this up a few times without damage to your original data. Okay, let's create a blank web database. And while we're at this, I suggest that you turn off track name autocorrect since we have to rename a column in the table and we don't want access to attempt modifying of forms and queries if you have any of those in existence in this current database we're working with. Okay, let's import these data tables from that application into our new database. Remember, before you attempt this import, we have to disable the Import Relationship checkbox. The only reason we have to do this is the relationships in the older database are not set up for SharePoint relations. I cannot stress that if we went into the original database I'm importing from and did the following steps I'm about to present here, then in fact we could import those tables and relationships intact by using the option to import relationships. The only reason why I am disabling this import relationship option is because Access is currently preventing me from importing the tables into this web database with the relations enabled. Again, if those relations were set up correctly, then I could in fact import from a non-web database into this web database. Okay, we have the tables imported here. The first thing we need to do now is hook up and re-relate the invoice table back to the customer's table. We can easily see the foreign key column used to relate back to the parent table of customers. Let's rename this column by appending the letter T onto the end. We're going to create a new column here with the same name in the correct format required by SharePoint. The key concept here is to create a new column using the wizard. This new column created with the wizard is what will allow SharePoint to correctly consume and set up these related tables when we publish to SharePoint. We thus are going to add a new column using the relationship wizard. This wizard is selected from the drop down of options when in table layout mode to add a new column. When the wizard launches, simply select the parent table we want to relate this new column to. In this case, we want to relate back up to the parent table of customers. On the next dialog screen, we now select the primary key of this parent table we want to relate to. Now that we've set the primary key column, we simply go next, skip past the sorting option as it's not needed. This dialog can be dismissed. At this point, 
we give the name of this column the same as what our original foreign key was. Also, we do not set the options here for cascade delete and enforcing referential integrity since this column does not yet have any data. At this point in time, we thus simply created a column that's going to become the foreign key column for relating back to the original parent table. New column. We click finish and now let's drag this column over to beside the original foreign key column for ease of viewing. At this point in time, all we have to do is move the data from the old column into the new column. In fact, a great way to do this is simply to just hit Control G and directly type in a little bit of SQL to copy the column over. I usually often do this little Control G trick since I don't want to bother to have to write code or even fire up the query builder. At this point in time, you can see it's a relatively simple little SQL update to copy the data over from the old column into this new column that's been designated as a lookup which SharePoint will understand for use in relationships. Okay, now identical in terms of data. So I'm just going to toss out and delete this old column of data. We don't need it anymore. At this point in time I select our new column go up into the ribbon where the table design is and at this point I think it's a good idea to set an index on this column. Okay, next we select our column and then click on modify lookup again. This is the same set of dialogues and it remembers our settings from before so you can skip past them all but now that the column is filled with data we are now able to checkbox the Enable Data Integrity box and also select the Cascade Delete box. It is this feature that allows SharePoint to realize that this is now a legitimately related table. We are now done and these two tables are related to each other. Okay, now let's do the same thing for the second table of Invoice Details. Once again, we can easily see the column here that relates back to, in this case, the table called Invoices. Once again, I'll go through the little process of renaming this, comma. I'm going to go here pretty quick and not waste too much time because this is exactly the same set of sequences here. Again, we use the lookup wizard. In this case now, we're going to relate the invoice detail to the table called Invoices. So we select Table Invoices. Again, this case we have a primary key of ID. This dialog we zoom past and again we get to the last panel in which we give this foreign key column the same name as what the original one was in our application. And again, we don't enforce referential integrity. Let's just drag this column over, put them beside each other for ease of visual use and viewing again. Again, the little control G trick and we can fire up our SQL. Often the SQL you have just sitting there from last time can be modified or utilized to save you even more typing. Also because we're re manipulating we are manipulating data local the speed of the system is pretty fast. It's better to make your changes local before you do anything on SharePoint. Now let's get rid of this old column we don't need by deleting it. Highlight our column, go up into the fields thing. I set an index here as a habit and at this point we click on the modify lookups. Our wizard remembers all of our settings and we get to the last panel and at this point we are able to enable referential integrity and we are now done for this table. Okay, at this point we are done. What I'm going to do now is not really that important of a step, but I'm simply going to publish this database up to SharePoint. Keep in mind, by having set up the relationships between those tables correctly, then the upsizing of this data means that all of my data, all of the relationships, and all of the foreign keys, and everything else will move up as one coherent, completely intact set of related tables.
Once this data has been successfully published, I will then demonstrate how Access and both SharePoint have set up these relationships correctly. Not only that, this technique is also a way in which you can use the relationship diagram to display relationships for web-enabled databases. The way I'm going to demonstrate that those tables were correctly put up to SharePoint is I'm now going to create a blank, regular database. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to link the tables from this regular database to the SharePoint website we just created by publishing that web database. What's interesting about this aspect is that because we correctly set up the relationships when we published, it turns out that SharePoint, the website, and even this regular database that we're creating link tables to SharePoint will all correctly respect the referential integrity that we've set up. I've just simply launched the wizard here and done an external linking to the SharePoint site of these tables. Here's the real cool part. I'm now going to bring up the database tools and bring up the relationship diagram. This is a fresh new database and I didn't put these tables in the relationship diagram. Downloading them from SharePoint did this for me and as you can see both the SharePoint site if you were to open up and use the design tools there would show that these tables have relationships set up and this local regular database with linked tables to SharePoint also shows that the relationships were correctly moved up into the cloud. I should also point out that this is a great little trick and technique to document or print out in relationship diagrams for existing web database applications you have. From the web database you can't use the relationship window but you can certainly launch and create a blank regular database link to the website and SharePoint and Access will correctly pull down the relationships and fill out the relationship window for you of which at which point in time you are free to print.